You know, several years ago, I actually had this exact model of tractor quoted from a local coyote dealer. I was, I was this close to buying one and I didn't for a variety of reasons. And now here we are, I've got a beautiful clean used specimen. I've put about two hours on this already, doing some work around here. I'm gonna put some more hours on it too, show you guys some of the stuff in action, but this is gonna be for sale on our website. All of our prices include shipping on them too, so you can check that out. But let's tell you more about this Coyote. It's a DK42 SE tractor, all right? It has a Coyote KL 5521 front end loader on there. I want to give you my impressions, kind of walking around it, just what stands out to me and what I think that maybe, I don't know, you would be interested in as well. And so let's start up front. This is going to be a standard bucket that these tractors come with. Very heavy duty built. Love the reinforcement on the sides here. So this is gonna give extra rigidity. So if something does smash on the side, it's gonna help it kind of hold its shape a little bit better. And then down towards the very bottom leading edge, you have a really thick, I don't know if that, that might be half inch uh, reinforcement plate there. On the bottom side, you have a, a holes that are pre-drilled for a cutting edge, okay? A lot of these smaller compact tractors don't have that on there. So it's a nice feature to come standard. And then the top edge is rolled back, kind of like on the Kubota buckets. We've talked about the John Deere bucks before that have kind of just a, a flat edge that comes down, really prone to breaking, or not breaking, but bending, I should say. And so this is, it has a couple little bends in the top corners here, but you can see how much better it holds shape along the front position there where it counts. Skid steer quick attach, all right? And skid steer quick attach is skid steer quick attach, whether that's a, a subcompact tractor like a Kubota BX, whether it's this Coyote, or even my much bigger Kubota M4 tractor. So that means you can swap out a bucket for pallet forks, for a snow pusher, for a grapple. And speaking of that, you have a third function that comes on this guy here. The discerning eye. When you're shopping for used tractors, look for a hydraulic circuit like this mounted somewhere, normally on the tor torque tube up here, but somewhere in this general area, that'll be a good indication that you've got that extra hydraulic circuit on your tractor. And of course, that is what you need to operate a grapple, to operate a hydraulic angling snow blade. Oh, what else do we use that for? Shoot, we ran a, a front mount brush cutter on here and operate it with that too. A lot of different things that you can use it for. Hey there, June. What are you doing? What are you barking at me for? Huh? Oh, I'm, don't even care? You're on a walk or a run. All right, we'll see you later. So this is gonna be metal, all right? That's a metal hood, unlike the John Deere, which is the polymer, which I do really like. I'm not gonna knock that. So if you, you drop a chain or a rock or something on here, it's likely gonna dent. When scratches get into you know, these hoods that are uh, steel, whether it's this or Kubota or anything else, you know, you're gonna put scratches oftentimes through the paint and through the primer and everything else. So you just gotta be aware of that, uh, be careful. But this does, this orange cleans up better than Kubota orange if it's gonna to start to fade. So I, don't ask me why, it just must be a different paint compound or whatever else, but it cleans up nice. So this loader, again, very heavy duty. There's nothing that's chintzy about it at all. I mean, look at these cylinders that are on there. They're huge. They're gigantic cylinders. It is quick park, all right? So like most loaders are gonna have these days. Something that stood out to me, you had this whole orange kind of subframe that ties in the front and the back of the tractor together. And so this loader, well, let me back up and, and what I would compare this to is, well, it's kind of like a 3039R or a 3046R. It's kind of right in between there. It's about a 40 horsepower tractor. So a little bit more than the 3039, a little bit less than the 3046. But compared to the 3R tractors, well, this loader is going to lift nearly 2,500 pounds, <laughs> which is like 900 pounds more than the 3R, and it's gonna lift it to basically nine foot tall. It's 0.3 inches shy of being nine foot in the air, all right? And that is trouncing what the John Deere can do. It's almost unbelievable. But to put it in a different perspective, this will lift only 300 pounds less than the John Deere 4066R. So this lifts about 2,500. The 4066R, the same rating to the full height at the pin, lifts about 2,800 pounds. So it's telling you how incredible this is right here. And, you know, while it is a heavy tractor, I'll get you the weight in a minute here, you need to have a lot of ballast weight on the backside of this machine. It's a heavy tractor, the cab helps as well. Get these tires loaded, get a whole bunch of weight back on this three point, you know, get your hitch hangers with suitcase weights, get your Versa bracket, get a big old attachment, get a big ballast box, 
you got to have a lot of weight to offset a machine that can lift that amount of stuff with the front end loader. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it going to help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not going to freeze, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, continuing on, full HVAC cab. We'll give you a tour of the inside in a minute. You had the mirrors out here. It's something I like about these mirrors. I actually like them a little bit more than uh, my Kubota M4. They're very stiff, all right? And maybe some of you might not like that, but what I like about that is the fact that if you hit something like a little limb, they don't move, they don't bend out of the way, they just stay put. It's all very rigid on there, and I happen to like that as a guy who whacks limbs all the time with my tractor. And now they don't come standard with these R14 tires, but this particular model does have it on there. And it is an option, like a lot of the, the tracking manufacturers are starting to offer these days. So R14s on the fronts and the backs, really love the bolt on or bolt together hubs that are on here, not a welded hub. And what that allows is for you to change tire or wheel width and, and widen your stance or narrow your stance as you see fit. And you can typically get eight different positions, they call them eight way hubs, uh, out of these bolt together hubs, which is a really nice feature. And I think that a lot of companies have started transitioning away from that because it is an added cost versus just having a single simple welded on hub in the middle there. This is a nice touch. Now we are including the Spico quick hitch on here. I just think that there's such a uh, well, they are a really popular item by volume, the number one item that we sell. And so we're putting one of these on here to sell with it. But backside of the tractor, have the rear work lights up top. There are front work lights as well. Here's your antenna, okay? And you'll see some plugs on either end so you could add additional work lights if you wanted to up there. Uh, toolbox, you know, I mean, a lot to be desired always in toolboxes, but this one's pretty typical. I've seen worse. I haven't really seen much better. It's kind of Par for the course. This is cool though. They have an external three point control. Watch this. You can just lower that down. If the tractor was on, you could push this and raise it back up as well. So that's uh, a nice touch there. Category one three point hitch on the back side of this. They come standard with a rear remote. All right. Not a lot of manufacturers include a rear remote standard. You can add a second uh, hydraulic outlet on the back if you want to as well. Of course, you're going to have your 540 RPM rear PTO. A nice drawbar on here too. The one thing that I wish these had, and I think, don't hold me to it, I think you can upgrade if you wanted to, uh, the telescoping turnbuckles. This one kind of has the, you know, the basic kind there that nobody really likes that much, but there is a decent amount of room in here. You can get to it and access it and adjust it, but I feel like they are upgradable. And if not, I know there's a place online that sells upgradable telescoping draft links that uh, I'd probably look into. You know, final thought about the back end of this tractor is, it's beefy. There's nothing chintzy about it. You look at the rear axle, there's a lot of mass there. Just the whole transaxle area itself is, is bulky, all right? And I think that's gonna help with the additional weight on top of that, but uh, it just kind of gives you a sense of stoutness, which I think is important. So here's a look at the inside of the engine compartment, just a one piece hood that lifts all the way up from the front. You know, folks asked me, I just posted a video uh, recently about uh, taking off a front end loader on a John Deere, and they said, I've never had to take my loader off. And, well, I think one of the reasons that you may do that, whether you're doing your own service or you're taking it in for service, is just for engine compartment access. And, you know, you can see you'd be able to get all around the engine a little bit easier if you didn't have the front end loader on there. So that's just food for thought on why that might be a nice option to have. Uh, but air filter right up front, so easy to get to. That's probably one of the more common things that you'll check on a regular basis. Now, the battery is interesting. They have it stored down underneath here. And I guess it gives, you know, it's kind of a hideaway area. You have to undo four bolts and then this front plate will come off and then probably take your air filter off as well uh, to slide that out if you need to change it. But fortunately, that's something you don't have to do very often. Other than that though, it's uh, pretty easy to get and, and check to uh, the, the fluid levels that you need to, but a decent design. Daydong is a manufacturer name. Now Coyote's been around for quite some time. And in fact, right now, to my knowledge, they're making the, the Bobcat uh, compact tractor lineup as well. Logically speaking, I would think that Bobcat would cost a little bit more because they're 
sourcing it through Coyote where Coyote could sell a machine a little bit cheaper. Maybe that's just me, but that's how my brain works. Before we hop in, I just noticed the fuel tank down here and I've already actually filled this up, but a nice convenient location, someplace low to, to fill instead of on your hood or on a rear fender. I don't know, I think that's a nice touch. That's like what my Kubota M4 has too. Actually, I'm gonna open this one up, get a little breeze coming through here. It's a very nice cab. I will say right off the bat, the one thing I wish it had, armrest. That's the one thing I think that's missing. They may be optional, not sure. I've seen some of these with them, so I don't know if they're just a bolt-on thing or if it's a whole different seat. But besides that, it's a very easy to read, easy to navigate and find your way through cab. I mean, it's there's not a whole lot to it. You have some storage compartments up here, cup holder, another little storage cubby for a cell phone or something else. More storage over here. You got outlets, okay, auxiliary, USB, 12 volt. You can switch it to what you need right there. Uh, three range hydrostatic transmission, okay? So low, neutral, medium, and high. Uh, this lever here is gonna be your front end, well, sorry, front wheel, wheel assist. So basically two wheel or four wheel drive. Of course, standard is gonna be locking rear differential just with your, your heel there. Never a very convenient location for that, but it makes sense. Split brake, which is a nice touch, okay? Uh, here's your turn signal controls. You have a horn, that works. Light controls, you push in on the foot brake, pull down on that, and that's gonna be your parking brake. Push back in on the foot brake to release. Um, let's see, that's tilt steering. So you just pull that blue handle up or down lock it back into place regen right here these are going to be for cruise okay uh well cameraman can you see that that's that's going to be flashers right there this up and off um throttle control ignition twin touch all right that's one of the big differences down here between the kubota the other orange and this guy here is going to be twin touch versus the treadle you can see i'm six foot three on a good day, maybe just a hair underneath that. This is how I'm fitting, seat is fully back. I have a decent amount of room. I, you know, I think if pedals were way up here, that'd be too far. If I had an inch more room, that'd probably be nice, but in the couple hours I've spent in here driving around, I haven't felt cramped in any way. Okay, so here's your loader joystick, all right? Very nice joystick. This is, well, I don't know another machine to compare it to, but it just responds very well. So. You have a little bit of play in there like that, which is typical of every loader I've been on. However, once you get beyond that play, you have a lot of fine tune, enough resistance, but not too much to really do exactly what you wanna do. Um, loader hydraulics respond really quick, going up and down, no issue there, and curling and rolling too. This is gonna be your PTO. You push this down and then turn it to engage it. Just pop it back and it'll turn off. Got your wiper controls. I think these are work lights up top, uh, defrost, rear defrost right there. This is going to be your rock shaft control, okay? So you can raise and lower your three point with that. This is the control for your rear remote. Oh, and I didn't mention it right back up here. These buttons, these two buttons are going to be how you control your third function, all right? So to open and close the jaws of the grapple, to angle your hydraulic snow blade left or right, that's what you're going to use to control that. A little look at the top of the cab, all right? And again, I'm six foot three. What do I have? I have two, three inches of space above my hat. So I'm not cramped in here at all. Um, I tend to wear my seat belt in cabs though, just because if you're on rough terrain, I don't want to bounce up and accidentally whack my head in the top because that would hurt. So my seat belt kind of keeps me stationary, but a lot of vents. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vents all around. I was working in this tractor on 84, 85 degree days, really hot. Uh, summer days are right at the end of August, early September, and I was perfectly cool. I would say in the winter time, like the Kubota M4 I have has some vents all around the steering column. Those blow more towards your feet a bit. I don't know how well this would do getting that heat way down there in the winter time, but this is a pretty typical setup of a lot of cabs. So you make do. Uh, HVAC controls all up here, just fine. You have your radio there. Speakers in the back. I think there's just the two speakers. Air filter up here. You do have a visor, a sun visor if you want to, and a dome light as well.
So folks, make sure you check out the future videos when we do a whole bunch of work with this thing, show you what it's like in action, but we'll give you a little demo driving it up and down and tell you my thoughts on that. Scoop a couple of loads of dirt and then get on out of here. All righty folks, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the air right now so there's no ventilation. I'm at idle. Just wanna give you a few seconds to listen to how it sounds. I'm gonna turn the air on just on low just to get a little circulation or it'll get really hot. I'm going to be running in mid-range. I'm going to throttle that up. Now you can definitely hear what's going on there with the engine. But it's not terrible. Get a little spin up and down the lane here. I've got my seatbelt on again because uh, otherwise you start to bounce a little bit. It is a suspension seat. Maybe it's a Grammar brand. Pretty common in construction equipment and a lot of different tractors. Really love the medium range though. It's um, just the perfect split between low and high. You still have a decent amount of torque. You don't feel like you're crawling along. We'll throw it in high on the way back. The challenge with high is that's when hydro transmissions, well, that's, I wouldn't say that's their weak point, but they have no torque. They don't like hills. If you have loaded tires or anything else, any other extra weight on the tractor, it'll start to bog it down. Steering is nice and tight though. Easy adjustments, just little wiggles here and there are all you need. Loader joystick again, don't need to do anything with it, but it's just a natural place. Maybe because I don't have armrests on here, but uh, gives it a little bit of stability. One hand on the steering wheel, definitely comfortable. Get down to the end of the lane here, turn around, throw it in high. It's gonna be a challenge though coming back up this hill. You can't really hear much of that transmission right now. I think that'll change when we put it in high, but we'll find out. Easy to turn. All right, throw it in high. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, you hear that? I mean, it doesn't help we're going uphill down to about 1500 rpms let it pick up a little bit here let it catch up i am not pressing down all the way just a little ways and that's really typical right there of high range in a hydro and you know to be fair high range in a uh, gear drive even my Kubota m4 it's really only for like a uh, transport mode going down the road getting from point a to point b on a smooth surface as fast as you can and we're doing okay now that we've gotten moving. Let's go ahead and throw that back in medium. Actually, we'll throw it in, well, we'll put it in medium now. We're gonna go scoop a couple buckets full of dirt here. Show you how that does. I'm gonna put it in low for that. Now, I haven't checked these tires. I have a feeling they might be loaded. But this loader can lift a lot of weight. So I'm gonna take it easy here. Not go too crazy, just more or less showing you how it works. All right, let's go ahead and switch it to low. There we are. And we are in, uh, are we? Yeah, we're in four-wheel drive right now, or front-wheel assist. Let me go ahead and knock this down. Pull it back a bit. Clear it off a parking pad here with that JCB and dozer blade. No problems with power there. Now, similar to the 3R, these are fairly narrow tractors side to side, and me being a bit of a, a wimp, I feel like I can sense the slightest, the slightest tip, you know, left to right. I can see myself, if I kept this tractor long term, widening it out with those eight wheel or eight position hubs. Go ahead and scoop another one here. Dig 
kicking in pretty good. Made some nice runs. Smooth loader operation though, again, it's nice and tight. Every loader is a little bit different. So when you operate different ones all the time, it's interesting. Not exactly full scoops of dirt, but that's okay. Looks like that bucket matches up with the current width. That's about as high as it'll go right there.